Back in the days of Rancher 1.6, people would ask me what they should do for storage. And I tell them that storage is like the quest for the Holy Grail. Everybody's out there looking for it. Nobody's got a really good answer for it. And fast forward, here we are today, and there are other answers. But Rancher's answer is special, and that's Longhorn. But what exactly is Longhorn? It's a solution for distributed replicated storage inside of a Kubernetes cluster that uses containers as storage replicas. It'll run multiple replicas on different nodes, making sure that data is synchronized between them, and then it presents a single volume to Kubernetes to attach to a workload. This is way better for some environments. There are lots of places that Kubernetes runs, but which don't have a solution for persistent storage other than the machines themselves. Longhorn lets you use otherwise wasted space on local disks, and it abstracts the storage provider away from the persistent volumes. In the case of a cloud provider, that's awesome. I cannot tell you how many times I've had a node in AWS go sideways and stop responding, and how that kept disks from detaching, which then resulted in downtime for workloads. Longhorn would notice that a replica was not responding and promote another replica to master, making the persistent volume available again. In that specific case, Kubernetes would also restart the pod on another node and everything would come back up. Container attached storage doesn't work everywhere. It needs reliable local disks, so if you're using a hosted Kubernetes provider, eh, this isn't for you. In a hosted provider, you don't control the worker nodes and you can't guarantee that your provider won't rebuild them or relaunch them. If they do, the data's gone. Even if you attach external volumes to the worker nodes, replacement nodes don't know to reattach the volumes if they get rebuilt. Now, this isn't a Longhorn problem. It's actually true of any other solution that you might use, like Storage OS, Rook, or OpenEBS. It's just how it is. Some of you run multi-node databases simply because you want fault tolerance for the data. I can think of many times when I ran a master and slave MySQL cluster when I didn't really need to. The methods for splitting read and write traffic require extra effort in the code, and if the master's down, well, stuff is still broken. Promoting slaves to masters requires redoing replication in the other direction, and it's always ugly. Active-active solutions like Percona introduce their own complexities, and that overhead isn't necessary when you're just looking for reliable, real-time data synchronization. With fast failover of Kubernetes pods, you can use Longhorn for persistent storage of your stateful sets. In some cases, you might even decide to just run one database node with three storage replicas. That'll give you replication for fault tolerance of the data in situations where a few seconds of downtime doesn't really matter. Longhorn has a number of features that make it possible to do things that you can't do with regular storage, or at least that you can't do easily. For example, you can snapshot volumes ad hoc or on a schedule, and you can back those up to an S3 provider and then restore them on the same cluster or onto a different one. You can use this to do something like make a live snapshot of a production database and then load it into another cluster to do development against. For you DR nerds, you can create a read-only replica on another Kubernetes cluster. In the event of a cluster failure, you can promote that one to read-write and quickly be back online. My favorite feature though is the UI. It not only makes it easy to see what's going on with the storage layer, but it also does it locally. Some storage providers make you connect your cluster to an external service, and for me, that's not okay. I don't want to be schlepping data to and from my cluster or using a third-party offsite solution to configure my cluster's storage behavior. With Longhorn, I don't have to, and that suits me just fine. So how do you get started? Well, if you go to the GitHub page, you can find instructions for deploying it with Helm charts or straight Kubernetes manifests. If you're a Rancher user, though, you can deploy it directly from the app catalog. Longhorn is a system application, so it should either go into the system project or into its own project. It will deploy into a namespace called Longhorn System, and I'm fine just putting it into the system project. There are a number of options available, but unless you know that you need to change something, just keep the defaults. The only things you might want to change now are whether it should be the default storage class, and if you know your S3 or NFS backup information, you can configure it here. But if not, you can configure it later. There are options at the bottom to configure dedicated nodes for Longhorn using Kubernetes taints and tolerations, and at the very bottom, an option to expose the UI via an ingress. You do not need to do this to access the UI. If you leave it set to false, the Longhorn UI will be visible from within the Rancher UI. When you're ready to go, click Launch, and then wait for it to turn green. Out here in internet land, where we have the luxury of speed ramping, installation only takes a few seconds. In reality, it'll take a minute or so to come up. When it does, click the link at the bottom there, and you'll be taken to the UI. 
Here we can see information about the nodes and the storage available on each of them, volumes that we've created, backups that don't exist yet, and then there's a page for configuration. Longhorn is ready to go right out of the box. To demonstrate this, let's launch a three-node MariahDB cluster from the app catalog. We first set the storage class to Longhorn, although since it's the default storage class, we also could have left it blank. I don't have a lot of storage available on these nodes, so I'm going to just use a two gig volume size. Remember that Longhorn will create three replicas of each volume. So for each of these two gig volumes, I'll need six gigs of space. I'll do the same with the replicas and then click launch. As Rancher builds out the database environment, you can see the volumes appear in the Longhorn UI. We can see where they're attached. Wait a second. If we only had 13 gigs available, and we just deployed three two gig replicas for each of the three nodes, that's 18 gigs. How do we still have 11.3 gigs available? Magic. These are sparse disks, which means that they report their full size, but they only provision what's really used. This lets you oversubscribe your available storage, and as long as you keep an eye on it, you can add more storage as you approach the real physical limits. There's no need to pay for what you're not using, right? What would you like to learn about Longhorn in a future video? Backup and restore? Read-only multi-cluster replicas? Let me know in the comments below. Longhorn is shooting for a beta release around KubeCon in the middle of November, and speaking of KubeCon, I'll be there. If you're also going, please swing by the Rancher booth and say hello. I'd love to meet you. Take Longhorn for a spin today. It's super friendly, and I think you'll really like it. I make these videos for you, so if there's anything that you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.